All right, cool. We'll just get this started. All right, so movement towards B side. We have someone watching the cross for LAT, or not LAT, LAG. LAT is on this side. They're trying to do like kind of an aggro A thing. You know, so you see sometimes people push up to this fire car or like push into cafe and watch the cross here. But they're doing it from the outside. They're doing it like double teaming from the, the fire Humvee. <clears throat> like Dan, Dan sees him cross. He's going to now wrap back to see if he can help. Uh, actually, no, he's going to keep pushing forward with Joe Eves. Like, this is really good positioning. But they do have one guy, like, look at uh, number eight. He's trying to, like, basically play a timing where he's watching people that are trying to come deeper ga towards gas or towards the middle here. And as soon as he gives it up because he was watching the cross, Joe just sees exit out laundry and kills him. Now bomb is down. They're kind of like playing retake. They get the kill on the, on the pinch. And now they basically just have to teamwork this. They know they're going to be like two on the site, one broken. That's basically the the common like strat. Uh, good morning, JP. Not be able to watch the stream now. Will the vod be posted? Regardless, have a great stream. Uh, yeah, I might I might post some more clips. I've been posting the full vods, but I don't know if people enjoy that because it's like my main channel. I'm just posting the full vod. So if anything, it'll be live like on Twitch, or I'll, I'll post a, a bunch of like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be posting a bunch of uh, clips of, of stuff that we do on stream. Alright, so Dan gets one kill. They, they kind of teamwork this guy towards broken area. He probably sees him coming out DVD here. He must see his weapon or something. Or maybe he's just checking. It's a good show. Now I know the last two guys are on, on the site. This is an easy retake. Just play trades. Communication on point, and again, the post plant retakes the best in the game right now are the thieves, and that is perfect. It's good for you guys. All right, may maybe I'll, I'll keep posting the full vods, or maybe I'll start like a second channel where I just post the vods. We'll see. You saw the heads of LAG players started to do every player's point. Now their opportunity to attack. We got to see what happens now. All right, LAG is on defense now. They're doubling mid cut. One guy watching the cross, or actually, like, kind of double watching the cross, but one guy's pushed up towards uh, B Dom over here. I wonder if he's going to try and take a timing. Yeah, he actually does try and take a timing through B Dom. You don't really see this too much, but it's a pretty aggressive play. They're kind of trying to counter DVD here. So they're trying to counter anyone that might be pushed up DVD by having someone push from the mid cut into DVD and then having this guy, like, kind of sandwich them too. And it's a free first blood. Actually, free first two bloods. That's a good play. That's like a that's like just a super hard DVD counter. I mean, this is two v four. Like, you, it's very very hard to make plays on this map with a two v four, just because of how big it is. Like. I mean, if you if you get seen, you're you're pretty much dead in a two v four. Not really, not really a map where you can make super big plays like other maps. All right, standard spread by LAG. LAT they have the one guy going actually cafe instead. So we saw before that he was going towards the Humvee to watch the cross. This time he's going towards cafe, watch the cross. And they're sending Dan to play a street over here. Usually you have one guy over towards like this truck or towards like what we would call Nero uh, towards like the fence area over here to watch the a street. Then you have number three who can option off to either B or he can just keep playing this like mid tank over here and just kind of scout towards like this middle area. Hey, J Tarkin or JT Larkin. Thank you for the sub. Appreciate that. How's Rio Scrims? I think it'll definitely get into the rotation for the qualifiers. Yeah, I think it, I think it'll be for Hardpoint and maybe Search. I'm not sure about Control yet. All right. You see the spot, Joe, see but as you can see, yeah, number three just holding off like mid and, and just trying to get any info, trying to scout any info because a lot of times on, on offense, teams will literally just spread on this and then just default to like one of the sites. 
So he's kind of just trying to see if anyone's rotating back and forth. Number two here is kind of alone, uh, but he's playing on top of this uh, little cruddy spot. So let's see if they check him. He actually moved spots. He, might have moved in the perfect time. he moved. He actually did move at the perfect time because this guy Estrel was trying to jump up and see, um, and I believe he would have seen him uh, on top of this little P1 counter thing. For the check spot, but that stun does not connect. He's invisible. This is just hard because you you have to get one if your Joe deceives here. Like if he doesn't get one here, that's really really hard. Uh, but he does get one, and that's that's probably good enough. Now you have information that they're probably going towards this A side. You have number one who's already playing for it, and he's he's probably telling them like they got a guy on the fire Humvee. Just watch watch bomb. So. Afro has to at least take some peeks at it. He sees that no one's gone onto it yet. Now he sees he's on it. He's going to nade him. Hopefully he doesn't have a trophy. But Cammy, Cammy has the teamwork. So Cammy had rotated from the B site. They are probably just like, you know, if, if they end up going and wrapping towards B, it's going to take a long time. We're probably just going to, uh, you know, retake it there. But if they're going to try and come out towards this A side, then we'll uh, we'll just instantly hit this guy out because he's so low on bomb. Like he has no help here. He's just baking on a number eight, making a play mid map. Who's your favorite non-optic POV to watch during the match? Uh, during a match? Um, that's a difficult question. Um, I always like Paco's ma um, like POV when I was uh. When I was like coaching him and stuff. Himself, Paco, Paco has a cool POV. This is a good play by Kami to like wrap back. But they they probably just knew based on the situation that they needed to wrap. Two v three with bomb down. This is pretty much chalked. I'd be surprised if anything happens here. Yeah. He loves them. He's really good with his hands. Here we go. All right. So LAG optioning to not play anyone towards this A street. They're watching. They're actually double watching the cross once again. So you saw before that number eight was watching over number seven, and number seven pushed up towards B Dom. This time it looks like he's just going to stay here towards the mid court, towards mid tank. And now they have two guys working towards B side. So instead of crossing actually towards uh, the mid cut, they cross deep towards like ice cream area. And I guess they're, instead of going up to Broken, they're just going to push toward... Oh, no. Actually, one does get into Broken. So instead of going the faster way through mid-cut to Broken, he's going to wrap all the way through this long way, go through the, like, B, uh, B control... Oh, not B control. B search. And then get up to, to Broken here. And then number five kind of leaves him. So they probably assume that they're going to try and make some type of plays towards mid-map because that's why they have two guys looking... They have two guys looking over number seven who's watching the A-cross. What's good, Brock season? So I guess, yeah, so what, what's happening here is they're kind of just shifting eight over here towards the Lamar Street now. But Estrel's kind of alone here now. So that's why he's going to back up. So good play, good play to back up because he was just afraid of getting singled out. And now number five is going to go help him. As soon as you see, like, contact towards this B side, you kind of need help. So number five is going gonna, is gonna to go option off to help him. Question is, do you have a tactical? Do you have a least with? No, everything's still covered. They have two guys towards the B site. They can see if anyone's pushing up this B side with number five. Number seven is watching the A side for them. Number eight is watching over him towards B Dom. Here, oh, let me uh, let me get my my epic pen out. This will be easier to to draw stuff for you guys. What's up, JP? We've been watching the VODs. Cool to catch you up live. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Glad you've been enjoying it. All right, so we have A Street covered. We have mid Dom or like B Dom covered, like mid map covered over number seven. And number five is watching Ice Cream here. Number six is playing kind of safer, still watching towards his B side, too. And once again, LAT on invasion or just invasion offense in general, you're going to see a lot of just regular speds at the beginning and then trying to make a play later on in the round. So it looks like they're trying to do something towards this A side or mid side, maybe converge towards mid tank 
or hit out Lamar Street, get towards A, or even hit through Cafe. Um, they actually don't even go through Cafe. They're going to go and try and make a play mid-dom. Or I keep saying mid-dom. Mid-map slash B-dom. So he sees them cross. He's going to try and nade Joe Deceives on bomb. They actually do have a trophy. I'm surprised no one has tried to hit him out towards this. Oh, wow. I assume that number three and number four, or at least number three was going to hit this as soon as like... I guess they don't see him. They actually never see him towards the spot. Um, and they don't know that the nade came from him. So they don't know that he's actually at this mid tank right now. I assume that the, the afro was going to activate and try and get this kill. But he actually gets a kill deeper. So he gets this kill on number five instead. Number four has to kind of still keep uh, this honest, like this side of the map. Because technically number six could just instantly pinch. So if number four or someone isn't picking it up, then that's uh, that's not ideal. Because you, you want everything covered, obviously, when you're trying to take control of the site. So Fame gets this trade on number five because he knows where Afro is after the after the kill. They get bombed down, and this is where number four kind of has to make a play, I think. Joe Deceives dies on bomb. This is a huge play by Kami. Okay, not only he's he's getting one on on this guy who is mid court here, but he also turns around for Estro, who is once again pushing up through DVD from this B side. That's what I was saying. Like you kind of have to watch. Uh, this this pinch here and he, and he covers it so it's a good play he gets number seven weak doesn't kill him though 1v1 with bomb down so I knew this competitive COD thing but why do you think a lot of people don't like these maps um, probably because of the play style that's nowadays these maps were kind of made for older COD which makes sense is the timing. And then Fame just doesn't know where Dan is. 1v1 and then Dan wins it. So big play by Cami there. He kind of won them the round, I would say. Alright. Defaulting towards B side. We're going to have two guys towards the mid cut. One guy goes towards the mid tank and another guy is going to try and cross towards broken area. He might get pinched out from number six here actually. Yeah, number six and number seven just kind of teamwork him. Afro is not there for the trade yet. And on the other side of the map, let's see. Joe DC is once again playing in cafe. Dan's actually pushed up towards uh, the side cafe over here. So he's not playing super deep. He's basically playing on the A site. Since that kill happens, Afro is going to now try and wrap around, play a little bit safer towards ice cream side just to keep uh, it honest towards the B side. Because he basically needs to, like, they're just going to play retake. He can't really play this aggressive. Fortunately, he has a sub, too, which is a really unfortunate situation. So, like, he's just going to try and see if he can get a, a cheeky kill on bomb here. This is the only thing you can really do with a sub in this situation. So he peeks the door. He doesn't see anything because the guy's already planted. Now LAG is in a pretty good setup where they have one guy left on bomb. Other guys watching the pinch. They have two or one guy watching the mid cut. One guy on the tank can watch like the ice cream push. They smoke the mid cut to try and retake. It, it does make it awkward, and that's actually, you know, that's that's something a lot of teams are doing. So in those retakes, they'll save their smoke for uh, for the mid cut on the retake. So I think someone did it to us in a match. I want to say it was it must have been Phase because I think we played them a lot on this map. But retaking with a smoke is is really easy, or not really easy, but like it's definitely ideal because trying to like get through towards this mid cut when they're just aiming towards like that area is is so hard to, to exit out of. So you have to kind of deal with the smoke, and then that that smoke helps Afro get a two piece actually because they're kind of looking for Joe in the smoke, and Afro is able to get two on bomb site. I'm not sure how he gets the second kill though. I'm, I'm surprised that Estrell lost that one. 1v2 though, because they did get a they did get the trade with the nade on Afro. Joe gets one, but he gets straight up. So that's just you know that's just because of the the first blood. You know if they had even numbers, they probably retake this. Now we'll see if they can find the equalizer. Thieves once again on the attack. Typically, what? Three nades over this side of the map? No. All right. 
LAG. Thieves once again on the Number eight. Assault still watching the mid cross from like this area over here. Two guys towards B site. They're going to have fame. Instead of going towards like middle map, B dom area, that he's actually going to play cafe for them. Watch the cross. He actually gets, they actually get a nade kill. So good nades by number five and six. Team nading. I assume they blew up this, this area. Yeah. So right near the tree house. Trophy spot in a distance, and that'll be the punishment for it. Those are deep frag grenades that are rolling through. So LAG on. It's always important to try and get like a early nade kill. That it's like if you can get one of those, it's just a free. Not I wouldn't say a free round usually, but it's it's the, a free first blood where you basically didn't have to do anything. You just kind of gambled on a on a nade stack. Maybe a bounce to see if you can catch fame, but fame is backed up. No to be All right, let's see. Let's see how LAT does with, with three men on offense. Because this is, it's like a super awkward situation. Now you have LAG playing super tight on the B site. So they're just making sure the bomb doesn't get planted towards this side. Uh, they actually don't have this A street. So Assault actually gives this up. I'm not sure why. Number seven is going to have their mid tank because he's basically playing for anyone to get caught off by this angle over here so he's playing a little bit deeper so if anyone tries to make a play through mid maybe go towards mid cut or even like go this way and look for people like over here he's catching them off guard so that's what that's what fam's doing over here towards this middle area but i'm surprised that they they left this a street open they're not expecting someone to just run up this a street like this like dan is but dan has to make a play and i think this is a it's a pretty good risk to take if you don't see anyone towards the Lamar Street, um, and he gets a kill for it. So that's actually huge. I'm not sure why they gave up this Lamar Street. They kind of have every, had everything covered. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But lurking towards this B, this B side was Cami, and he just I don't know. He he tries to he tries to move, but honestly, he I feel like he just has to wait for his team to actually start like getting on bomb or something or doing something so he can start activating by being the first one to move uh he kind of like screws himself over because he knows people are on this b side and could be rotating because they like the let guys already got a kill towards this a side so yeah maybe just a little bit too much movement there and then you have leg on the on the retake so now they have all this mid map control Jodeci's can't even plant bomb. He's gonna try and smoke it out and just get on the bomb himself. Dan's here, like they've kind of flipped sides, which is really funny. But Dan's here towards the palace, and he's just gonna get picked apart. So I don't know if if I'm if I'm Cami, I'm like maybe they saw him towards this corner. They actually didn't see him, so he could have probably played this corner. Maybe he was afraid that he was just gonna get checked in that corner, and just camered. That's a, that's a possibility too, because like this guy's this guy's gonna check it anyways, and he does get camered, so. Maybe there's nothing he really could have done. He was just trying to try and chow the guy before he cameraed him, which I get. So that's just unfortunate. So yeah, he's just, he's just is that enough to pull the he gets a bad time with it. He's trying to catch them off guard. Regardless, Ashfield was gonna was gonna kill him. So I guess I guess it's not really anything he could have done. The extra trade, so many men to deal with, and the rival nine, right gun for the job. Still can't even get the plant down because famous there for the And then Joe's just in a 1v3. Just unfortunate for him. It was a good play by Dan to try and get that kill at A Street, and he actually did get the kill, but they couldn't make up for it. I've been trying to understand COD more than just running and gunning. What do you think helped you the most with understanding COD and thinking the way you do? Uh, watching a lot of it. Uh, I was also really fortunate to be under the wings of a lot of people that had a lot of experience and a lot of good experience. So learning under them was, was really important too for me. Uh, but watching for sure is the, is the best thing you can do. Like watching, watching pro gameplay and kind of deciphering yourself and saying, you know, they're doing this in this situation. Why are they doing it? Like, what's the point of it? Like kind of trying to grasp the information that's going on and see like, you know, why would they be doing X, Y, and Z in this situation? I think that's the best way to go about it. Because most of the time they're making the right play. That's why you always say it's, or that's why you always see like one or two plays in the entire map and you make like, let's say hundreds of plays. One or two plays in the entire map could completely shift 
you know, if a team wins or loses. So uh, they are making the right play most of the time. It's just those, you know, few times that can be a really, really big factor. This is a good team Nate off the break. You really don't see this. Or they're just stacking towards the mid tank and just they're literally nading the guy on the cross. Which is funny. And they get number seven for it, so yeah, that's a that's a that's a cool play. You don't really see that often. Because most of the time, like you won't hold the cross for too long and you'll leave it. But if you hold the cross for a long time and they're gonna set up nades like that, it's not not a bad team nade. Now again, once again, free first blood on defense, similar to what you saw in that other round. So what we're having here is one guy on B site playing alone, but he has help from Afro. Going to be watching towards his mid cut. Number one is going to shift towards the Lamar Street over here. And number two is playing a kind of a credit on bomb. So he's basically, uh, he's watching this A street, but now that number one is coming here. Okay. So actually they, you'll see the decision making in real time, actually. So number here. So number one's still watching mid for Afro. Number two here. Here, I'll draw it up. Number one's still watching mid for Afro. Number two here is watching A Street. And you'll see how they shift once they get the like information of what their, their teammate is doing. So he's still watching A Street for his team. He's kind of going back and forth. Now he's he's probably saying, you know, like, I can cover mid cut. So once this guy gives up yeah, the mid cut and you know, Dan goes towards this Lamar Street, number two is going to turn, watch up towards like the mid cut or like towards B Dom. And then he turns that way, and then Dan's like, okay, actually, I want to stay towards the mid-cut, and he goes back towards watching the safe street. So you always want to have everything covered, but uh, just that little decision-making, you you see how the comms are working there, where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to pick it up. Okay, actually, instead, you pick it up. I'll, I'll keep holding this. If you got an offer to coaching, will you accept or reject? Um, I'm already coaching a team, so... Because as soon as you cross, that rotation will be very quick, and the angle might be punishing. I mean, this is this is a good angle by Afro to help with the with the mid cut. Fortunately, he doesn't get a kill on that that on Diamond Con there, but he does have help from Dan. So, again, once again, Dan is here watching towards B Dom, but he can also help towards this mid cut. So it's kind of a flexible position, and that's probably why he wanted to stay towards this area because he can help that way instead of you know if he was towards this Lamar street which was which is what they were like kind of debating and you know afro or sorry joe deceives was trying to watch the mid cut he can't really watch the mid cut from playing this credit on bomb so now that's bombed down 4v2 once again 2v4 on this map is just is very very difficult uh, but they do get a, an instant trade kill. So if you're going to do something and, and try and, and clutch this out an instant kill instant kill like tra like that is is really important and now they're going to try and single out Joe Deceives in Cafe over here. Number 8 sees him, and he's going to try and bust this door. They know that he's in this corner. He's going to try and teamwork with number 5. This is great like teamwork, just baiting him out, because number 5 is going to get the kill. Exactly. So now 2v2, but again, 20 seconds left on, on the clock. Bomb is in mid-cut. So you're not playing the bomb this round. You're basically just going to have to win off of kills. And this is just a hard situation. So Cammy gets that kill on number eight towards the B Dom, and they get the last kill too. So pretty good job. Scrims update. I'm always gonna say scrims went well or something, dude. Because anything I say will be taken out of context or used. There's no winning. There's no winning in the situation. It'll be used in some way, and then there's no winning. Can you give an exact example where you were like, I never thought about that in the moment, so we have something, somewhat of an idea how pros think differently? Um, what's a good thing? I don't know, it's hard. It's just very situational plays that you might see in, in Respawn. Um, like something like, I don't know if you guys watched the Kenny video with the 1v3. But that, or not, yeah, I guess it is a 1v3 because it was in like the invasion P1 and he, he gets the three piece to win the map. But his decision making in that situation was something I would never like be able to, like, I would never understand, like, oh, trying to move in this specific situation to try and, you know, get a better angle at the people coming like behind me. And it's like, 
I don't know, at that type of level, in those circumstances where it's a final P1, we have to win that to stay alive in the winner's bracket or whatever, that's that's like super impressive in my, my opinion. Switch play up close with the AR play. ZXPD, I know what you're doing, bro. Now I'm just getting these troll questions with it. This has been a, a spicy map. We're seeing a What's lot good, of people? very different looks here. New nades. New play. Would you say a new update has positively or, uh, or negatively impacted the flow of the game? Uh, some maps, it's positive. I don't, I don't know. Some situations positive. Some situations negative. Like, honestly, the new Karachi P5 is growing on me, but the P4, I think, is still bad. Invasion P1 is it plays the same but i'd still like the p1 cafe better like the whole like the way you're playing as a team and playing towards like p2 on the rotation is all kind of the same but it's it's not as good as the cafe in my opinion the p5 on that map is actually kind of growing on me but p4 mid courtyard i i don't like it's it's too much of a contest white time fest and there's like an ability to like supremely trap people while you're capping time so if if you can't get enough tax or get kills while you're on this palace side, you can get trapped there really badly and then it gets chained P4, P5. Thieves back on the attack as well. Thoughts on Stanley getting dropped? This, yeah, I, I was I meant to talk about that before, but I don't know. I, it's it's not my camp. I don't know what's going on in the Paris, or sorry, the Vegas the Vegas camp. So I don't, I don't want to speak on anything like that. I'm, I was surprised, that's all I'll say. But I, I mean, I don't know what's going on in the day to day, so. There's a lot of things that go on in teams in the day to day that people don't see. So I don't know. It's probably based off that. I, I have no idea. So I don't really want to comment on any decisions that they're making. I'm not, I'm not in that camp. It doesn't affect me. We're just going to keep doing what we do, you know? Another instant first blood with some nades. That's what is it? Three or four rounds now? Really good nades out of out of LEG there, or assault. I would assume it was a teammate though. Let's see if someone else threw it. Yeah, assault and Diamond Con. Both of these guys teamwork this nade. You see them lining it up here. They nade the guy on the cross. So what happened to them in the round previous? Uh, they do back. And let's see the setup. So once again, LAT three people on the break because they got first blooded. B-side, they're playing super safe, LAG is, so it's gonna be really hard to kind of take control of this site. Fame is in this credit corner watching uh, basically both the back cafe door and mid cut, or I keep calling this mid cut, B-Dom. And then you have a uh, number eight watching the Lamar Street over him. So everything's still covered. In the rugs building now, laundry. They've got that bit further forward. The only good news for them is the gorillas aren't that much further forward either. Well, the last time what happened for the man down. So assault see this guy uh, back gas. Obviously, you can't do anything in the lab. You're not gonna kill them there. He sees him push up to the this fire humvee. Looks like they're making a play towards this cafe area. Gonna try and bang out bomb or, or mid cut here. Let's see if they. This is actually really, really, really good. This is one of those situations where you, you don't realize what they're doing until you see it like later on. Like in this view, this is a perfect view to actually see it. And this kind of goes to whoever asked that before, but look at what Dan does here. So Dan opens this door before Cami crosses. So this doesn't allow Fame to see that anyone crossed towards this, this B-Dom area, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he can't see past this door. So Cami crosses towards the mid-tank, and he doesn't even know. Or maybe he does. Maybe he can see under it, because Diamond Con is kind of ready for a gunfight. Okay, never mind. Maybe... I assume that was like a teamwork thing where they were like, okay, if this guy's playing this corner, but I think, I think Dan just opened the door um, himself. Fame in this corner. He does not have a ton of support, and they're looking for him. It's a good chance to stun off. Actually, I don't know. Maybe he. Support, and they're looking for him. Maybe he just had a feeling. I'm gonna have to test this out in game or something. Maybe he just had a feeling that they were towards this, like mid tank, or could be there with Fame's comms. I'll have to. I'll have to. I'll have to look at that. Because if it is a teamwork thing, and he didn't see him, and Diamond Con just guessed, that kind of sucks for LET, but. And then Diamond Con gets a, a, a nice two-piece.
We'll get the job done. Diamond Con, really good play by Diamond Con. Comms, wa comms wise or whatever, if they were able to see it, good play. If not, then it's still good play to, to pick up that, that mid cut. It's a good chance to stun off of the inside of that door. We'll get the job done. Diamond Con, perfect timing. Assault step. I'm just surprised that they had bomb bomb guy Cammy trying to make this play over here. Because if he dies, then bomb's just down like mid tank rather than towards the A bomb. You know what I'm saying? So I'm assuming it got awkward because Joe Deceased was the one who died, and he was the one carrying bomb for them. And then Cammy just picked it up. You know what I'm saying? So that just made things awkward. But having him be the one. To be making this play towards towards B Dom is kind of weird because he has bomb. Fame moves a little when Cammy crosses, so you think he knows. Okay, then that's that's the. Then it wasn't like a, a drawn up set play. If you can still watch it, let's see. Wait, actually, maybe we could see from this position. I think you can see under the door. Let's get thick syrup. I think you can see under the door. Let me. Damn, I'm gonna have to like slow mo this straight up. Let me mute it. Does he? I don't think he sees. Oh, he might see his head over here while they're crossing. That's what it is. So he doesn't see their feet on the door. He sees like their head while they're crossing towards the mid tank. I don't know. Regardless, uh, a good good defense by LAG, specifically with the the team at the beginning. Street. Maybe an extra 15 feet further. You can see the cross of the tank? Okay. I just assumed the door was kind of like blocking that, but I assume that he sees their head or something while they're like trying to go around it. Okay, so what we're doing here, LAT, kind of the same setup with Joe Deceased playing this credit corner, I'm assuming, because they didn't see him Previously playing that corner, he's playing again. Two hit the mid cut. Number three is going to cross over towards broken side. Cammy's playing the P2 tank next to him. And Dan's playing towards the taste tree. Kind of this similar to what we saw in that other round. Let's see if they uh, can clear Joe Deceives out here if they go towards A side. Uh, once again, you see they're working towards this A side. Number five still is going to have to keep him honest for anyone that might be pushing through uh, the B lane. Now Joe Deceives actually plays the same corner that Fame is doing in the previous round. Does he get nade? So he gets nade here, so they know that he's in this position. So that's why Estrel is kind of like jiggle peeking it i'm sure he gets weak from this nade right yeah he gets weak i'm surprised Estrel doesn't just straight up like exit the door and chow it right away like i guess he tries to get shots off but i don't know 81 health if you hit him with that nade you're probably like let's just chow him surprised they didn't go for it but Joe Deceives, he plays around this bomb site and gets two. I don't know how he gets the second with the pistol, but he does it. Assault tries to make a play a lane. He gets the trade on Joe Deceives, but once again, you know, bomb down with 30 seconds left. Number five is on the other side of the map. Let's see if they can, you know, do anything here. It's going to be really, really hard with what uh, LAT is doing. Look at, look at what LAT is doing. They're crossing with each other. Number one's watching, like, B Dom for number three. As soon as he sees him cross, number three picks it up. He's gonna get the kill. They know last guy alive is A Street, and they win the round. That's three first bloods for Joe to see on the map, by the way. Alright, once again, number eight watching the cross off the break for LAG. Looks like they're going to play one guy on the B site, one guy broken. Another team, like. Look at this. Another nade. That's a that's a crazy team nade. Or maybe it was just one nade. It may, it may have been just one nade from Dimacon. I assume it's two, though. But if not, if it's just one and it blows up the, the truck, 
Like, that's another. That's crazy. That it just keeps happening. These these nades by both these teams have been really good off the break. But what we're doing here, once again, number eight watching the cross like he has been doing the whole game. Number seven, instead of uh, playing towards mid cut, and he's actually been playing cafe a little bit on these defenses, so he's playing cafe once again. That's funny too, because they're not even like going towards B here. He just exits out of blue at the wrong time, which is kind of hilarious because it's kind of it's so delayed, and they're actually just they're optioning towards like this A side, and he's just exiting blue at the wrong time. So that that just kind of sucks. I'm not gonna lie for Joe to see. He's probably so heated after that. Another another time where he's getting first blooded off the break. Their bomb like their bomb carrier is getting first blooded like that. Once again, uh, I believe did number six ever get pushed up to broken? Yeah, he went to push up the broken, but now that they got the the kill, they're just gonna play super tight on bomb. That's probably just their their mindset, you know. If we get a first blood, might as well just stay close together at this B bomb site and make sure that they don't take any uh, advantages on us, pick us apart, you know. So now we have number eight watching A Street, number seven is watching this mid cut. They don't really see anything, so that's still it's still LAT. Kind of just playing spread. Let's see if they see Afro cross here. So, number seven's watching the A Street for them because number eight gave it up. So, yeah, again, sometimes you'll see teams using this player to watch the A Street, and sometimes you'll see them, uh, like, over here or towards the mid tank watching uh, the A Street. So, regardless, everything's still getting picked up, and that's, that's really important for anyone playing, like, ranked playing stuff. You just want to make sure all the lanes are picked up, regardless of what you guys are doing. So once again, it really looks like LAT is trying to make plays towards B Dom over here late in the round, and they do get one kill, but that gets traded by another kill. Three v two now. They know they're towards his A site. Dan tries to cross the bomb, but he gets naded as soon as he. Actually, he doesn't get naded, but he he does try and shot this mid cut. Let's see. So he st some he stuns something. I guess it's yeah. It must be. It's either Cami or, or Dan. I'm assuming it's it's Dan. Or maybe it is Cami because there's no way Dan's making that move at well stunned. So it is Dan. It is uh, Cami that gets stunned deep on the A street. Dan tries to just take a child mid cut and dies. He just he's just trying to make a play. I guess. And then you know Cami's just. In a basically uh, a 1v4 or 1v3, sorry. All right, round 11. For this final round as well. Their first Is it worth constantly shooting the other holder uh, across A Street? Bruce ended with like 21 bullets late round. Um, you know, sometimes it's you just got to keep them there, keep them honest, make sure that they're not being able to make any plays towards the B side. So, like, let's say you have a standoff between. And you probably probably see this in your rank play games too. You have a standout between like a guy here and a guy either gas or a guy mid cut. Like they're kind of just ISO playing against each other. But you just want to make sure that he's keeping you honest and you're keeping him honest. So like he just, you just want to make sure that he can't get pushed up and start making plays. Like let's say if the rest of his team is going towards the B site and he can't make a play towards here and start watching the mid cut or make a play over here, start watching the mid cut here and watch like for reinforcements, you know, on the uh, defensive side going this way. But on the other side, you know, he kind of has to keep you honest for a little bit because you can start making a play where you're getting pushed up here and start like, you know, either pushing around this way and start making a play if they're going towards the B side. So it's a really weird, interesting dynamic where you have two slow ARs just like in a standstill with each other. Uh, but maybe it's not always like you, you do want bullets later on in the round, obviously. So you don't want to obviously just keep tag tagging him and not getting a kill for it. But you do have to keep him, you know, keep him there. Back on out of that typical splash zone. Nobody's so no no initial nades off the break on this one. We don't hit our nades. Let actually going towards more of a B hit now. You haven't really seen B being used too much uh, in this 
specific match just because of those initial team nades. Now we have A Street being covered, mid cut, or dude, I keep calling it mid cut, B Dom being covered. And then you have two guys towards B Street. Number five Diamond Con is kind of optioning towards a more safer position to help number six instead of being on, you know, on the P2 tank because he, you know, maybe he doesn't have a trophy anymore. Yeah, he doesn't have a trophy and. I think I think the trophy gets destroyed on the P2 tank, or is that still there? Oh, I think it's still there. But they know he's over towards this position. He he's like playing in the ice cream door, and they're kind of looking at that, so he can't really go towards the P2 tank. So he's just gonna back up a little bit. So LAT kind of starting to work something here. Let's see what they do. They know they have Diamond Con towards the back street. Probably another guy on the bomb site. Number one is still watching the, the cross for anyone that might be crossing back towards B side and kind of trying to pick up his own pinch. Because once again, like I was saying before, if you don't have anyone gas street like over here and can keep this guy honest, he has to he has to keep him honest by you know, constantly looking for this pinch. So you're kind of in a situation where you're trying to play timings and just make sure that you have everything covered as this pinch watcher, you know, Dan over here. Thieves etching closer. Here we go. I mean, you can feel the pressure. Astral, he's worried for it. Couple players on LAG trying to make. Wait, how does this ha kill happen? I mean, you can feel the pressure. Astral, he's worried for it. Oh, so they just hit mid cut. So no one's. I don't think. Here we go. I mean, what is it? I don't think number eight thinks that he can die from mid cut in this specific situation. So LAT gets a free first blood from him pushing up towards his mid court. So like they have, they don't have the mid cut covered in that specific situation. Maybe a lapse in the comms with things going down. Fame tries to get a kill here. He actually does. Oh, so what happens here is like they're not, they're not expecting another person to go hit this mid cut, but he does shoot. So I'm surprised he even gets this kill. And he, I, I know he gets like a a really good piece over here too. Wow. So this is a situation where who's pushed up here? Afro thinks that he has someone watching his mid cut in this specific situation so he doesn't think that this guy can slide out here and and die from or he doesn't think he can slide out here and kill him fame gets that one piece he gets a kill on joe deceives too. he even shoots a bullet at him i gotta see this i thought somebody else killed joe deceives oh he snaps on him that's a crazy snap and then cammy gets three pieced wow that's a crazy that's a crazy three piece and that's just a lapse in the comms. That's just... Afro doesn't think that he can... Afro thinks someone has his mid-cut for him. And then somebody else, like, I think Joe Deceives moves. So everyone kind of thinks that mid-cut is being watched by somebody. But just laps in comms, no one, no one has it. And as soon as he starts shooting, it's too late. Don't even know who got Joe weak there. Um, I assume it's Diamond Con here. Let's see. Diamond Con shooting. Yeah, Diamond Con definitely for sure got him, got him weak. And that's just standing in a 1v3. And I believe he comes close to actually doing this, maybe. He gets the kill on Fame. Plays Ring Around the Rosie here with Estril. Oh, dude, if he gets that kill a little bit quicker. But it's just 1v1. Diamond Con has a cross to the bomb. Does he even have bomb? He doesn't even have bomb, so nothing would have happened anyway. He would have just had a childish cross, but I know it actually looked like he was going for the centering for it. But he was just so weak. He's he's literally at zero HP. So that was a honestly that was a good ass search. That was a a nice invasion search round eleven.